Aya Neo has released information on its second mini PC, the Aya Neo AM02. The AM02 is aiming to be a more premium mini PC, whereas the AM01 was more budget friendly. Rust at Retro Game Core has an excellent review and breakdown of the AM01, and I'll give you a pretty good idea of what you can expect for the AM02 in terms of build quality. I'll leave a link in the description and the comments below to his video if you want to check it out. Now I'll go over the hardware specs and performance first. The AM02 is spec with a 7840HS processor. This is a pretty darn good processor for emulation, but it's kind of mediocre for playing PC games natively, usually at 1080p low settings for the most recent games. Here are some benchmark scores. According to Ioneo, the AM02 has a Cinebench multi-core score of 15,991 points and a single core score of 1,773 points. For 3D Mark, the Time Spy score was 3,241, the GPU score was 2,890, and the CPU score was 10,438. You will cross-reference these scores from Ioneo with other reviewers. Aki Udon reported a 3D Mark Time Spy score of 3,276, a GPU score of 2,920, and a CPU score of 10,606. Retro Game Core reported a 3D Mark Time Spy score of 3,212, a GPU score of 2,860, and a CPU score of 10,666. The numbers reported by Ioneo fall in line with the benchmarks performed by other reviewers on other mini PCs running the same processor. Once again, I'll leave the link to their videos in the description and comment below. The processor specs according to AMD is the following. It has 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock speed of 3.8 GHz, max boosted clock speed is up to 5.1 GHz, L1 cache is 512 KB, L3 cache of 16 MB, and the default TDP is 35 watts to 54 watts. The GPU is a Radeon 780M. Memory speed is DDR5, 5600 MHz, and the form factor is sodium. It's small outline, and the same form factor used in the laptops, it's just smaller in physical size. The hard drive slot is an M2 2280 PCIe 4.0 slot, and the max capacity supported is 8TB. Moving on to emulation performance. As for the emulation performance, the 7840HS can run almost everything at full speed, up to the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Some Switch games can also run at full speed as well. This processor absolutely crushes emulation performance. I will link the videos from Taki and Retro Game Core if you'd like to view them yourself. For native PC game performance, the GPU is a Radeon 780M, which is comparable to a 1050 Ti according to Ioneo. Based on other reviewers, you can expect to run most modern games at 1080p low settings and hit around 50 to 60 frames per second. This is pretty much the best you can expect for PCs in this form factor. As for the pricing, the bare bones model will come with no RAM and no hard drive and will have an early bird price of 441 US dollars and a regular retail price of 501 US dollars. 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of hard drive space will have an early bird price of 531 US dollars and a retail price of 661 US dollars. 16 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of hard drive space will have an early bird price of 571 US dollars and a retail price of 702 US dollars. 32 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of hard drive space will have an early bird price of 631 US dollars and a retail price of 772 US dollars. Now, I did the math and buying the base model doesn't really save you too much money if you buy new parts for both the RAM and the hard drive, so the early bird pricing is fair enough unless they are using bargain bin parts for the memory and hard drive, or if you have extra RAM and hard drives lying around. The early bird prices for even the high-end model is actually comparable to other mini PCs with the same specs. For example, the B-Link SCR7 with 32GB of RAM and 1TB of hard drive space is 655 US dollars on AliExpress and 749 US dollars on Amazon. The retail prices are higher than competitors, but this is probably due to the touchscreen on top of the mini PC. All models should be shipping by the end of February 2024. Now on to the features of the AM02. This is all according to Ioneo, so take it with a grain of salt. One of the features Ioneo is showcasing is the 4-inch touchscreen display on the top of the device. 
It is linked with their ISPA software and the first screen will display a lot of hardware readings. On their release video, they have the screen display the current FPS, TDP, fan speed, hard drive space use, CPU usage, power draw, speed and temperature, and the same for the GPU as well. You can use the touchscreen to change the TDP settings without having to go into the operating system. You can swipe to the second display which will display the time, date, and weather. The third screen will display an animated video. And finally, the fourth screen will have a volume control slider and the ability to turn the display off. You should be able to change and customize these features in the ISP software. As for other features, Ioneo seems to have built this device as something users can tinker around with. They claim compatibility with SteamOS, Chimera OS, and Bautocera for those focused on gaming, Ubuntu for those focused on dev environments, and even using it as a NAS or router. To that end, they included 2 gigabit Ethernet ports. For other ports, they have a USB 4 Type-C port, two USB 3.2 Gen A ports, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack in the front. The front also has a flip cover over the ports and is spring-loaded. It opens up like a NES. For the rear, there are two USB 2.0A ports, a 1.4 display port, HDMI 2.0, a gigabit Ethernet port, and a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, a USB-C port for power, and a Kensington lock slot for securing the device in a corporate environment. They also said they built the device with mounting in mind, but it wasn't clear if this meant Visa mount compatibility. It will come with Windows 11 installed by default. For my thoughts, I think this is a very neat device and all the features sound great. For the performance, it's fantastic for emulation. It's solid enough to use as a work computer other than some use cases such as running 4K video, and it will probably chug a bit if you're making games in an engine like Unity or Unreal. For regular day-to-day -day PC usage, however, it should be more than enough power. Native PC gaming performance is decent at best, but is serviceable enough. The cooling system looks to be pretty good according to the spec sheet they released. It has four heat pipes and a large fan that looks to be enough to run the CPU at full speed, but we'll have to wait and see for the actual temperature readings and fan noise levels once the device is shipped. The touchscreen on top is neat, but it does feel a bit gimmicky. The touchscreen controls can only be used if the device is within arm's reach. If you have this mounted behind a TV or a monitor, or even just sitting below a TV in a couch environment, it will be very inconvenient to use the touchscreen, let alone see it. I do think it's neat for display purposes, but it would have been more usable if the screen flipped up vertically so you can have an easier time seeing and interacting with it, or at the very least include a stand to have the mini PC vertically oriented. It won't be very easy to see the screen from across the room if it's lying flat down. And while I do think having the display for all the hardware readouts is incredibly handy, some privacy and security oriented users may not be so excited to have a third party piece of software have that level of access to the operating system. Thankfully, it looks like you can customize everything to your liking and being able to install Linux is fantastic. The spring loaded flip top in the front looks cool. I don't think it's very practical when using this device as a permanent PC, but I do think it's incredibly handy for people who will carry this around because it's another layer of protection from dust and damage to their front ports. Now for the pricing. While it's actually fairly priced when you look at the competitors, it's getting a bit on the expensive side when compared to building a decent desktop PC yourself. You're essentially paying extra for the small form factor and the convenience of having someone else secure the parts and build a PC for you. This may actually be worth it to some folks. However, for enthusiasts who are already comfortable acquiring parts cheaply and building it themselves, this may be a bit too expensive for what you get in terms of raw power. I don't see this being affordable enough for most gamers to rush out and buy it as a secondary device because at this price point, you can pretty much build a desktop yourself or buy a budget laptop. I do see this device appealing to a small niche, mainly those who don't have a lot of space or live a nomadic life and want emulation and decent PC gaming in a small package that would use less power than a full desktop. It'd be very handy for van living or for giving to a child as their first PC. The double gigabit ethernet ports also make it fantastic to tinker around with as a router and NAS, but it is a bit on the expensive side for a piece of hardware just to experiment around with. Overall, I think this is a neat device. It's actually pretty darn powerful for something so tiny. The hardware and performance look great. I think the touchscreen on top is also neat, but could be better oriented. 
The only real flaw I see here is the price. It's getting very close to the price point of a cheap laptop or desktop build. Let me know what you guys think about the AM02 in the comments below. That's going to be it. If I left out anything you wanted to know, please let me know as well. As always, hope you guys are staying safe and sane out there, and catch you guys next time.